Since the dawn of time, nerds have flocked to the movie theaters to watch their favorite movie, what they considered the holy grail. Then Disney came along and fuck that shit up. What's going on, all you nerds? Uh, we're back again. I have no idea what episode this is, uh, but I'm back. What so, episode is this? Uh, I guess this, this is a uh, mid-season. Is, we can call this yeah, a mid-season. This is a mid-season break podcast. Oh, yeah. Between seasons. Yeah, you guys know I am. I'm Wildfire One. Thanks for watching and listening, Nerds New Sexy Entertainment. With me today is Grizzly McBee. What's up, y'all? And another person we haven't heard or seen in a while because I think he was living in a ditch or you know under a car or something. Is some something along those lines. Hey, everybody, I'm Gambit. You should remember me. I'm your I'm your local uh, anger management issue nerd. I I've, I've recently got a little bit of nuts and I've calmed down. I will not be as angry to this podcast. Really, we're talking we're talking about. The last Star Wars movie, so you you have all rights it's to be angry. The takeover of Disney. The takeover of Disney. No, yeah, no. This is gonna get. This is gonna get bad. This is gonna get real. Uh, this is gonna get. This We're going to a dark I'm, place. I'm gonna try. Though. I'm, I've been working on like. I've been working on this new technique where like you know I don't let shit bother me as much. Okay. But we'll see how that works out. Talking about this. Well, movie. this I saw this, this, movie. this is this podcast is supposed to be our stress relief too. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We feel your pain. Uh, before we get into the main topic, though, there is some sad news that we're going to get into. Um, a good friend of mine, someone who wanted to be on the podcast but never really got the chance, her name was Nick Mitt. She was a, well, a good friend, uh, gave us a lot of good ideas about the show. Uh, she had passed away. She passed away about a week and a half ago. Uh, so we're going to give her a little moment of silence, and uh, we're going to say this episode's dedicated to her. I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. And she actually has been on the project. If you remembered uh, me getting suckered into playing Doki Doki Literature Club, she voiced Yuri. Yes, that is correct. Thank you for... I was going to say that, too. I completely forgot. Thank you for, for reminding. The topics of the last Star Wars movie, it's a little... It's one of those better late than never situations. <laughs> We've been meaning to talk about this, and usually, like, this is... I. You, I, I, I watched the movie, I want to say, the second week it came out. Grizzly hasn't watched it, just so you know. So there's going to be, for those of you who haven't watched it, Grizzly doesn't care. There's going to be spoilers. We're going to talk yeah, about the I, whole thing. I, I don't care. I, I haven't <laughs> cared about uh, Star Wars movies since Disney bought them. So, uh, I, and it, you can go back to previous podcasts and see my hate for Disney buying out all of my favorite shit. So, Gambit, let's turn the, let's turn the microphone to you, per se. What do you think? Like, what what were, what was your first initial thoughts? And then we'll go. I maybe not scene per scene, but like part per part in this movie, and we'll pick it apart. The thing about it is, is one of the things is like with movies, uh, whenever you inject politics into movies, uh, and the po- a political view is in the forefront, uh, the movie is a secondary. These movies kind of did that a lot. Uh, it was hard to ignore <laughs> the political statements they were making during these. Uh, luckily, that all being said, uh, I didn't feel like this one was so heavy-handed. It kind of was, but it, it didn't it didn't happen as much. It wasn't so as bad, happy- like in your face, as the other two were. I would say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that was nice. Um, uh, here's the thing: there's a lot of things about it that I thought made a lot of sense, and I I, I wouldn't have personally gone the the direction they went with, but since they went with that direction, I. Didn't disagree with 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 ha- with what happened, if that makes sense. And we'll, we'll get more into it as we go shot for shot. You guys see what I'm talking. about. Are you about. talking about so, what actually like, happened with Ray? Like who? Yeah, her her lineage and stuff. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Again, we'll wait, to, we'll wait for that to the end. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. a big that's a big spoiler, and I could talk about that for hours. But um, I'm mainly talking about like uh, like so the whole direction the movie went with, I wouldn't have gone in that direction anyways. I wouldn't have gone with the direction of the way the trilogy went anyway. Since they went with the direction they went with, I was okay with the ending. But at the same time, I was like, mm, this is a big piece of shit. Like, it really was. Well, I mean, well, I'll give it this. It was an ode to, like, Princess Leia, you know, Carrie Fisher, in a way. It was kind of like a, we love you, Carrie. This is this, your character. This is how your character is turning out. You know, in my opinion. Yeah, but see, so so let's just get right into it. Here we go. Ready? Do it. Woo, woosa. Let's get. Let's do this. All right. Here we go. Here's the thing. The first three trilogies were absolutely amazing, and they were amazing for a number of reasons. We've talked about it in length. If you go watch the few the, the other podcasts that we talked Episode about. Episode fifteen and fifteen A. Yeah, when we talked about. Yeah, 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into that because it, we all know that it was amazing. Okay. Prequel that sucked. Said, no, the we'll prequel did not suck. Eat a dick. Well, and then so as soon as you get into this trilogy. Okay. So here's the thing. All right. We're gonna touch on this briefly. We already talked about the first two and how I felt like the the the, the seventh movie was a shot for shot remake of number four, five. Literally took everything and went. Oh, is this is this a, is this really nice storyline you built up? Well, I'm just gonna put this over here and say fuck that. And I'm going to do my own thing. No questions were answered. I nothing concur. was finalized and nothing was open. This movie, my biggest overarching problem with this motherfucking movie is that nothing is final. Okay, and if you don't get what I'm saying by that, just think about the movie. C-3PO gets his memory wiped. Oh, just kidding. He's not dead. Everybody <laughs> dies, but don't worry. They don't actually die. Everybody comes back, but they don't actually come back. Like, nothing is final. There's no sense of, like, you build up these grand moments for people to die and people to, like, move on, and you don't let them happen. One of the biggest things I was really excited about this new trilogy, and this is going to sound a little morbid, a little fucked up, is that um, this new trilogy was a great way to get rid of the old cast and let them play out their characters in a fun way and give them a good goodbye. Like Han Solo got stabbed by his son and we saw it. Like, unfortunately, you know, Carrie Fisher passed away of a heart attack. So that, that was the point of these movies is that these characters aren't gonna be around forever because death is a thing, you know? And so this was a great opportunity to get rid of these characters and they didn't. C-3PO was supposed to be like wiped his memory clean and supposed to be out and dead and gone. And the actor could have just walked away from that role, but no, he's not. He's actually just fine. Like. No. Like, same with Chewbacca. Chewbacca is fucking not going to die. You know how Chewie died in the book? He died by getting a moon crushed on him by saving Han Solo's kid. But they're not, but those books yeah. don't exist no more because Disney. Because Disney. So, so, so they dropped the ball in that. They, they really dropped the ball in that. And the other big thing about this movie that really drove me absolutely crazy, and, and we'll get into it when we get shot for shot. You ever play a really badly written RPG? Well, this is what it felt like. Go over here and 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 get this magical axe and then with this magical axe go over to this location and shave the giant's ass and then take the shaved ass giant's hair go to this location braid it into a special knot and then you'll get into the final location like that's what it felt like yeah you know talking about yeah i can't i get what you, you're saying you know that reminds me of of a D D campaign <laughs> The wild knows what I'm talking about. The movie. Well, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, you remember when we were doing the, the, the review of uh, Mass Effect, when we were doing Mass Effect Andromeda, and you were bitching about how, like, some of the side quests were just mon mundane and fucking stupid? That's kind of the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Like, exactly. Like, you get this dagger that's right. supposed to be yeah. fucking amazing, and then... And then, and like you said, like Chewbacca supposedly died, but he didn't die because I didn't see two fucking escorts by our ships, by the way. I saw one fucking ship. It's just, it's like they, they chose to do this thing by like, like just like last minute to fuck with us, which by the way, well, I'll further explain this. Chewbacca supposedly dies because he gets captured. He gets caught by the, the first order. Yeah, the first order. They might as well, they might as well. They might as well call him the Nazi order. Yeah. They, so he, kept, he gets caught by the first order, gets put in this transport, and then there's this asinine scene where where they're flying off and fucking, and you know where I'm going with this gambit. I know you fucking know. There's this asinine oh, yeah. scene where Ray and Kylo Ren are fighting with the force back and forth, and they end up blowing up this transport. No one thought, hey, I should stop doing that. I might kill my friend. And it just turned into a pissing contest. And it was bullshit. It was like, bad. You, it was bad you writing. Actually up, you actually summed it up perfectly in the sense that every death in this movie, every goodbye in this movie, they wanted the emotional goodbye from the audience, but didn't give us the. They didn't want the closure. Was, like if you're look, I'm cool. This is what I was saying earlier. I'm cool with you killing off a character. Let's say goodbye to Han Solo, stab in the stomach, falls down a well. Kylo Ren killed his dad. Cool. It's it's like a jerk off. With no, without, the, and the girl, like, the girl's just jerking you off, and the girl's, like, not going to let you come. Like, just, oh. just finish the job. Just it's like a lap dance. Children. It's like a lap dance. You're getting lap dance. Or like yeah. a super rubber band just wrapped around the testicles. Like, just let me, just let me, just let me feel the emotional turmoil that you want me to feel and be done with it. Don't jerk me around by sitting there <laughs> saying, oh, Chewbacca, blue the transport. Oh, JK, he's still alive. CPO had one of the most beautiful goodbyes ever. 
good writing. I'll give oh, it would have it would have been perfect if they just went through with it. C three PO wasn't like respected in this movie whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. So the, the whole basic premise is that he has to he has to go into the computer. And it's going to affect him and wipe his memory, basically. He, uh, they got this dagger, the dagger he was talking about, we'll call it the dagger of shit stain. And, uh, and it basically has this, like, like map on how to get somewhere. Oh, it's where the Emperor's location's at. Yes, it's the final planet where the the final boss scene is at. Yeah, where the Emperor's at, supposedly. And that's no secret the Emperor's a fucking bad guy in this movie. So, it's the Emperor's final location where, where that's at. So... They ended up getting so the dagger seven movies. More like what, nine? If you want to nine. count them all. But the only one that could decipher the the shit on the fucking because it was written in ancient Sith. No one knows ancient Jeez. Sith. Yeah. And the only one that could read it is C three PO. He's a communications droid. He reads it and he, but he can't literally say it. He's like programmed against saying it. And I guess one of the things, and I could be wrong if I'm remembering incorrectly. I apologize. Or there's a way to do it, but it has to do with wiping his memory. So they have him yeah. all set up, and they have this set up to where, like, C-3PO could be gone forever, and it could be very sad, and it could be, a, like you were saying, a really good lead-up to another another droid, which they did introduce us to another droid that was very fucking worthless. Well, instead, they decide they're going to do this, and he does lose his memories, but what, like, R2 had a backup or something, right? Yep. R2 in his little fucking prison pocket had a backup for C-3PO for his fucking lover. His prison pocket. <laughs> So we have we have we have Chewbacca who died but didn't die. We have C three PO who's like the equivalent of droid dead but not dead. He would have forgot all his friends. And there was a really good scene right before he does. He says, "I just want to look at all of you and, and remember this moment." You know, it was a really it like was, it was a, it was beautiful. It was and but everyone was like, "Are you talking?" Like there was every time he said something, there was always a retort that was very disrespectful. Like, oh, you're still here? They were yeah. really fucking mean to that droid. Well, the thing about it is, is, like, one of the biggest things I can't stand about the new movies is that, like, everybody has to be quippy and everybody has to be, like, snarky and have, like, at least one or two zingers. It's like, no, that's not how the world works. Like, I am an angry fucking nerd and I will always be an angry fuck bag. Like, I am not one for zingy quips. Like, I'm not the one being like, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. No, fuck the sun and blow that motherfucker up. Like, that's me. Like, like you see the neck veins? I get very angry. Like, oh. Anyway. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Like, and I'm, I'm just as angry about this movie. Like, it, I'm gonna tell you, it wasn't as bad as I expected. I was expecting like well, we episode eight bad. Well, we should back it up. Hold on. We should back it up. Okay. Because we skipped a lot. Start from the beginning. Here we go. It opens up and we all seen the seventh movie. So you know that, you know, that Luke faded away into dust like Yoda. Uh, Kylo Ren is now the fucking Supreme Overlord. He's basically Hitler. Uh, you got fucking. <laughs> <laughs> what he is. He's basically Hitler. Go ahead. Go on. I just, just your, your fucking analogy there was great. So then you got, you got, you got the rebels who had their first defeat, but you know that, that, uh, that, you know, that blue haired fucking rag. That she like barely had out. anything to do with anything. But, but I will say for the seventh movie, I know we're going back just a little bit. That explosion, when they hyperdrive through a ship, through another ship. Oh, that was cool. That was good. Anyway. So the, so the movie leads off and it's very and it's and it's, and it's the the rebels at a very low point again, again Disney and their infinite jerk off like just recycling regurgitating fucking bullshit. They're mimicking five. You know it's it ends on a very da- down very somber moment. Uh, the bad guys or the bad guys are seeming to get power. The good guys are fucking decimated. How will they ever come back? So the movie opens and then we'll go from there. Kylo Ren on the planet. He went to the planet that fucking the Emperor's on, right? And we we the first yes. one of the first things you see is like a fucking Snope clone, all fucking stupid looking, and it looks like he's gonna work for the Emperor almost. Like he's like Ky- right. like Kylo's like gonna work for him. He he offers him a job. Like oh yeah, you can be like your grandpa, be like old times. Just follow the family business, kid. But the only problem is he's not the blonde haired little boy that you know he like that, that, that Uncle Bad Touch likes. We all we always we, we set it up where <laughs> Emperor Palpatine survives. Which don't get me wrong, like you go back and watch the movies. Yeah, he was electrocuted. Yeah, he was thrown down a well. 
the part that bothers me is like when you watch the when you go back and rewatch the movies, the bitch was the center of the explosion. Him surviving is not very fucking likely. Well, they they and this is what this is what I'll say. Like that was that was not the emperor we saw in that movie because you just well, said it. Yeah. He was the he was the center of the explosion. And it, it, it has been done in the Star Wars universe before where an emperor would clone himself. And they have the yes. technology. Yeah, it's a really lame fucking thing to do and, and, and lean back on. But I see that. I can see that. That's why Snoke was a thing. Snoke was an incomplete emperor. He was the fucking Emperor 2.0. Durr! He was his fucking puppet. You know, go out there and play with these right. guys for me while I get better. Or, you know... And it, in, in the long run, you know, the long short of it all, it, it's obvious because he can he can transfer his his consciousness into whatever. And that's the whole idea. In the long run, the, the, the final bo- boss battle was all about him doing that to Kylo Ren. Yes. So that that right there, you know, that is your explanation as to how he survived that explosion. That really wasn't the Emperor we saw. That wasn't the same Palpatine. Well, and it was, here's, what's, here's, here's where Disney did something a little right. Transferring your consciousness to, to body to body is an amazing uh, thing because when Palpatine talked to Anakin Skywalker in the opera back in like episode two, he talked about Darth Plagueis and mm-hmm. how Darth Plagueis would stop on death. Yeah. So, and if and if Emperor uh, if, if Emperor Chip Palpatine was as great of a Sith leader as we all think he is, he would have these abilities too. I'm actually not really mad. Actually, in the whole movie, I'm actually not mad they brought back Senator Palpatine. I'm really not. I, I am, but and I'm not. Really- I think they could have got a, they could have went a different direction. But at the same time, it's like you you really want to make everyone happy. Who's a better villain to bring back than the original villain? Like, but it does do this, in my opinion. It kind of like makes the last, you know, the three, the original three. Like, why did that happen? Well, huge spoiler because, and I was gonna say this for a little while longer. But what's dope is you find out Ray's fucking origins, which she's she's Palpatine's granddaughter yeah she's literally palpatine's granddaughter look at grizz's face yeah yeah dude now here's the thing i thought a lot about this at first i was like gay and i was really yeah. mad about it but then but then i got home and i thought about it and here's the thing i like it and here's why i like it because senator palpatine you go back and watch the movie Dude had a wife. Okay. He was the greatest political mind of all time, and he was seen with a wife. If nothing else, for the sake of appearance and being Senator Palpatine, he would have a wife and a daughter. Even if he didn't, even if he didn't love this family, even if he didn't care about this woman or this child that he fathered, because yeah. he's you know Uncle Bad Touch, he would still have them for the sake of appearance. I, I see your point, and that is actually a really good point to make. Um, I mean, I'm just going to go back and say he was a politician. You're the one. <laughs> you made Star Wars so much fun. So it was, uh, in that case, I'm I'm happy that they brought him back. But I also like, you know, it's kind of a slap in the face to the original trilogy to where, like, you know, they, they, they went through all this shit. And what did they do? They blew up two Death Stars. You know, like, why did Vader die? He just, he was trying to kill him, but he fucking failed. Well, and here's the other thing that really drives me crazy about the whole, like, Palpatine thing. Ray becomes just the greatest and is the greatest Jedi of all time for some weird reason, um, which I'm not even really going to get into to, to, to my feelings on that. But there's more, and you're going you're gonna to open this can of worms, and you're not going to like it. No, I'm opening it. Show. Do it. Do it. Put out the rage. Do it. <laughs> all right. So here's the fucking bullshit. Here's the thing. I'm all for women's empowerment. I really am. But here's the thing. Any superhero, any person that we as fans connect to are the kind of people that go through trial, tribulation, failure, and struggle to be awesome. Yes. Like that's what we That's why agree. Luke worked. That's why Wonder Woman worked. That's, That's why... why freaking Catwoman worked. That's why Harley Quinn technically kind of works. Because they had to be something, they had a grow phase, and then they just go. In Disney's woke fucking warped Hollywood nonsense, they're just like, put a woman here and make her the greatest. Why? Meh. There's no reason. They <coughs> explain it away by saying that she's Palpatine's daughter. Fine. I accept that explanation. Palpatine's daughter. But you don't just wake up one day, strapped to a metal fucking table, and then go, 
unlock the table. I knew you were going to go there. Once, I knew you were going to go there. Unlock the table. Oh, I got it. Done. Uh, Luke Skywalker, a whole montage to fucking do. Like, just to lift rocks. And she can do the mind trick like that? I agree. That's bullshit. I call bullshit on that. It's not even, look, look, I'm not making this a male or female thing. I'm really not. I'm really not trying to go there. Well, no, no. It's not a male or female. It's it's the fact that... Every Jedi... Disney already did it. <laughs> Every Jedi has to train. Period. Mm -hmm. End of story. Like, even the females, males, females, even the aliens, the Twi'leks, the fucking, you know, the fucking weird blind people, the fucking Cathar, the, the Sith, they all have to train. But this bitch doesn't. Because Disney looked at the fans and went, look, I'm going to need all of you to get all the way off my back about her powers. And all the fans collectively just went, no, okay, let me get off that thing. Well, not really, because I guarantee you're not the only one doing saying what you're saying right now. I said it, too. It, it was the same thing with Anakin. When he was, like, six years old, he can fly a fucking jet. I called bullshit on that. Sure. My, it's like saying, Wildfire, you're a chef. You should be able to fly a plane. Everything just fucking like glitched out on my fucking screen and I lost everything. Well, was we like can hear Disney you now. was like, oh, they're talking shit about my baby. We're going to shut I can't go out and do something that, like, we'll say, I don't know, someone else is good at be, just day one. I just can't. I mean, I didn't become a badass at kicking naps for a reason. <laughs> just took time. Disney and their infinite fucking wokeness decided to fucking make this bitch a powerhouse and, and didn't give us any explanations. I just really wanted a better explanation that she's Palpatine's daughter. Now, let's get let's get off that bitch for a little bit. And I'm going to talk about something that normally would never come out of my mouth in a storyline, but I, it, it bothered me. What's that Asian fat bitch's name? Yeah, the, you know what I'm talking about. The, yeah, the, you're, the talking about the they, you're talking about the one they you're talking about the one they they introduced as a love interest in the last movie that went fucking nowhere. You got you got it you got it. Okay, here's the thing. I don't like talking about love stories. I really don't care. And you know what? Honestly, she was a fat, quirky bitch that nobody gave a shit about. And honestly, I wouldn't fuck her. She with was a throwaway character. Finn, Finn finds another fucking girlfriend. What happened to that? Well, that's because his his first girlfriend was was fat. Rain, that was Rain, a bitch. No, it's not even Ray. It was the Asian chick that they fucking got really... Like, there was a love interest there, and all of a sudden this other chick comes in, and she's like a fucking horse creature thing writer, and he fucking wants to bang her all of a sudden. Finn is the fucking most horrible person in the movie by the end of this trilogy! That's kind of how he was portrayed, that he was going to, you know, be the love interest of Ray. And then they bring in this other woman. Yeah, well, and now that's she's attracted to. Him that's another he's thing. Only talking to her. That's another thing, Grizzly. He is all about Ray in this movie. He keeps telling, "I want to tell you something. I want to tell." Like you keep expecting, like him to pronounce his love to her, and then he finds this other bitch, and he's in love with her, and he likes this fucking Anna chick, this big Asian bitch that fucking comes out of nowhere in the fucking last movie. There's just like they're just throwing so many characters at us that we don't care about. It's a, it was like they were trying to relive that really big scene in the last Avengers movie where everyone came out of nowhere and worked together and saved the world. They I were trying you. to relive I that. You. I hate you. I hate you so much. Why? I'm saving that. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate You're you. You're thinking the same right. goddamn thing, weren't you? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is how I describe it. Hold on. Meh. Meh. Hold on. Meh. I got this. I got this. Ready? <laughs> Meh. Meh. We have this climactic space battle, right? going to happen. It's going to be fucking awesome. And space battles are always fucking awesome because laser guns, spaceships, and puke. We're fucking jacked. Now... So, no, no, here's the thing. Yeah, no, so here's the thing. So, the rebels start losing, right? All hope is lost. And then Doctor Strange opens a portal, and all the fucking MCU characters come walking out. You saw it too, then. You saw the same shit. Fuck you, Disney, for doing the same thing twice and making me pay for it two fucking times! It was... I'm not gonna lie, it was it was impressive when Marvel oh. did it. It wasn't impressive when fucking Star Wars did it. I was like, cool, the Marvel thing. Dope. Yeah, well, once you see it once, it's like it's like the Matrix. Once you see it once, it's great. But if it comes with a sequel, great. Uh, what part of the story are we on? We'll continue because I really want to get to the end of this. Because the the end where like Kylo Ren has this like this out of out yeah, of nowhere, out of character, fucking like I'm gonna be good now, okay. kind of moment. So, so uh, how did on, that come on, about? Basically, we've been jumping to character to character to character to character because <laughs> it it really is a movie. It really is a movie about characters. It's right? a clusterfuck of characters. To be fair, to be fair, to be uh, fair, Star Wars 
it has always been a movie about characters. So does it completely like jump around like the bullshit in Sin City? Yes and no. And but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes and no. So anyway, so we're jumping around. So we're, we're, we're actually, I'm sorry to the fans, we're not actually doing a cohesive story because like, we're not doing scene by scene. We're just doing characters. Yeah. So Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren has always been a bipolar little bitch boy. None so, of us can argue uh, that. Right. So he his transformation back to good, especially in the glimpse of ultimate evil, obviously Senator Palpatine, and his ability to be able to see ghosts and stuff like that and talk to the dead. It wasn't a big leap of faith to make him go back to uh, the, the light side. But when he does go back to the light side, it's kind of like, hmm, are we just going to forget that you killed your daddy? Are we just going to ignore that? Well, I mean, killing your father is pretty bad. But here's the thing. <laughs> the big reveal, the, 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 the big reveal when he goes back to good, though, uh-huh. is that his name, his birth name, is Ben. So he comes back out and he's like, "Oh, I'm good now and I'm I'm Ben Solo and it's cool and I'm and I'm cool now, guys. I had a moment where I I was freaking out, but I had a Snickers bar and I feel a lot <laughs> better." Uh, you would in all honesty, what changed bar. him? What changed him was Ray. All the all the nagging, constant nagging and like, "Oh, you can be a better man." D d d d d. And I think what really did it, what started it was that last thing she said before, you know, go fight that last fight, that last fight when he before he had this like little fucking brain aneurysm induced vision of his dad. And that I I'm going to tell you, I got a little teary-eyed at that scene cuz it was kind of nice. See I see your point, but I think the real ultimate transformation back to good was when he talked to his dad. It happened way too quick, in my opinion. I think they could have they that could have been yeah. a little drawn out, and then a little more like aw into it. And and that talk between father and son would have been that much more important. But what was said was very cool, and and it was kind of nice to see uh, Han Solo not being a dick. Like I was like, I need to call my dad afterwards. I just felt like I, I'm like I gotta tell my dad I love him. Like after that, it was it yeah. Was... No, I mean it was it was it was, one of, it was one of those like it was one of the, again it was it was one of the very few scenes that was written very well. Very few scenes, and it was I think I think I think every guy in the theater had a collective moment where they're like like they turn to the person they're sitting next to and they're like remind me to call my dad when this yeah. is over. Yeah, I think I, I agree. It was Fuck. very it was emotional and it was very well written. Um, yeah, you had all this extraneous bullshit. And then the stuff that you really should have taken your time on and really like, like massaged and worked and developed, you just rush through, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and that's the part. It's like, it's honestly like, okay, cool. You made me, you know, perfect rice and perfect green beans. But then like, you really fucked up the stink. You know, he's good now. So he's going to go fuck Ray because that's, that's, that's what everybody in this movie wants to do. This movie was like, like the seventh movie, it was like, like again, I'm not I'm not big on story. Like I, we, I've done enough podcasts. People know that I'm not big into fucking love stories. It's not like my thing. It's like that was a thing that I fucking have to fucking have in my movies. But like they tried so many. They like they like set everything up to like okay, this person can fuck this person. This person can fuck this person. They could all. You know what? Let's just have an orgy in the Millennium Falcon. Let's just fucking do that. Let's just fucking have everybody just splatter the walls the shit with semen. Else. Fucking Jackson Paul, like this whole motherfucker. Like, let's just do it. Like, let's just get it over with. Brown chicken brown. Okay. So, uh, so real quick, uh, Grizzly. From what we're saying, what's your general opinion? I know it's hard to give one, but what's your general opinion about about this new this Star Wars movie? Well, it sounds like the best scene of the entire movie is. Uh, ben Solo's uh, vision conversation with with Han Solo. Okay, well, uh, uh, I, that that sounds like, it. and in my opinion, I agree. Honestly, from everything that I've heard from the two of you, it sounds like another shit show. Thanks to uh, Disney, you know, they, they gotta buy the good shit and then fuck it up like normal. I mean, they don't always fuck it up. They did good with some of the Marvel movies, but it's it's like I said, a lot of this just seems like it's reconstructed from what's worked for them in the past. Well, and it's, it's funny too because we haven't even got to like the, the the end of it, which we'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Like, because but like because there is a, for me for a hardcore fan, there are some moments in it that are really dope, and I'm a very appreciative as a fan that they put into it. Let me ask you this, uh, Gambit. Like I said, 
I got to ask this question, and I know this is this is this is a question that's been going through my head since I talked about doing these podcasts with you guys. What was your opinion on I am the epitome of all evil Sith versus I am all good? What'd you fucking think of that? All right, so Grizz, give it a little context. So the final the the, the, the final boss battle, as it were, uh, is basically Sidious, Ray, and and Ben, and there is a lot of death. Uh, and a lot of healing, which real quick tangent on that. That's what that's one of those fan things. I'm really glad they brought it. A lot of the fans were like, what the fuck? A Jedi can just heal somebody. Uh, yeah, dude, force heal has been a thing forever. It's been in canon. Since the it's beginning. Been in book. Yeah. It's been the it's games, been in every video game. Yeah, it's been in every video game. Now, what I didn't like about this is that to heal somebody, you have to give them a piece of your life force. I don't really like that part of it. Anyways. And so Sidious stands up and he's like, he's like, I am all that is man. No, no. Yeah. And like, that's cool. And then, and then what happens to Ray is Ray gets like struck by lightning, not literally. And all the good, all the master Jedis, all of them just pour their semen into this bitch and scream <laughs> the fuck out of her. This, and this is kind of a cool scene, despite how much I hate the concept. <laughs> Get fucking, look at Oh, they pour their semen. In. There, there's a scene where she goes almost to like this forced meditation kind of state, and like everything sits yeah. still. And in her head, she hears. I'm, I'm talking. I'm not kidding either. You can look it up. All of the characters from all of the movies, including the animated series, where you yep. know that like the 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 Clone Wars, you know the the TV show, they're they're actually telling it. They're talking to her. Like literally, she got imbued with all of the jet, the good, the best Jedi from the past, or what, whatnot. But so there's this scene where like they're all talking, and you could hear all of them, and it's kind of cool. But I, mm, I, the whole concept between I and the imbuation of all the fucking evil guys, no, no, you know, like he hadn't changed. In a way, he didn't change. It, it, the, the way it ended was much like the fucking original. Exactly, exactly. And that's the other thing too is like the the action scenes felt just a little. Recycled. Flat. Recycled and very flat. Like the action scenes were very flat. I will give credit where credit's due. The fucking fucking boss scene with Kylo Ren and Ray with her fighting snow. Oh, that yeah. was a dope ass action scene. That was a that was some great choreographed fights. This one just felt it just felt like okay it's just it fucking clusterfuck of like I said. It was just bad. It was just very bad. It was. It was. It was it was and then, and and and, the, and then, like I said, the fight scene was just anticlimactic, and ultimately, and and this is the the dumbest fucking thing, and this is one of the things. So, so, okay, so Ray gets hurt first. Ben saves her life. Well, they both like, get hurt. His life. Remember, mm -hmm. like with force power, hurts her. He and he goes down a ravine. Ultimately, Ben gives his life to save Ray. Because at the same time, when that fight's going on, remember Leia is in like a coma. She's dying. That fall probably would have killed Kylo, but Leia was giving mm -hmm. him her life energy so that she could save, he could be the ultimate good guy. Long story short, Kylo Ren dies. So he dies, but he has this really, really awkward kiss with fucking Rey. Because he says, I love you. She should have said, I know. She should have just, that would have been great. I mean, that would have been, 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 been a slick ass line if, if she would have said, I know. You know, it worked for Han. We know you guys love each other. When you guys basically had fucking phone sex and he was shirtless sending like naked pics, like we get it. <laughs> like, <in> the seventh... <laughs> phone sex. Oh, golf clap. Uh, Grizzly, you look confused. Well, I'll explain. They were doing this thing where they can communicate, you know, in their brain throughout the whole th the trilogy. Well, they did that a lot in this. That's that's what he means by phone sex. Because he, he would he would talk to her, and she's like he's like in his room, like, or you know, doing whatever, working out, or you know, like, hey, I just worked out, baby. It was not necessary for him to have his shirt up, but that dude seriously just like did push ups and then like sent her an unsolicited dick pic. That's what that whole conversation was. And remember, nerds out there, you should never send an unsolicited dick pic. Nope. Gambit does not condone unsolicited dick pics. No. no. So yeah, so she sacrificed. Uh, he sacrifices herself. <coughs> he dies. Ultimately, of course, what happens has to happen. Uh, Ray wins. In the process, Leia died as well because something happened to her. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that's how Leia died. And I, I'm going to say this right now before we get into the the final part of the movie. Uh, a lot of those Leia, it wasn't it wasn't CG. 
her la- her parts weren't CG. They were actually uh, filming the movie when oh. she had the heart attack. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay, yeah, because she died. She died film. after yeah. a they, little after the they, eighth movie came out, right? Yeah, they never got to finish yeah. filming before she died. That okay, that makes sense because they did have a lot of footage with her in it. You know, her part. I want to say this. I'll give her a cough clap, Carrie Fisher, because. I don't think she could do any wrong, even in a shit show like the last Star Wars movie. Uh, she Her part was good. And I think that she went out in a blaze of glory. Kind of like, all, well, yeah. in my opinion, all of the older characters did, with the exception of Luke. Sorry, Luke. Which he showed up, of course, in this one, too, as a Force ghost, I believe. Yep. Yep. So he showed up, and that was cool. But anyway, so the final, final scene. Who's the last Skywalker? The last Skywalker is Rey. She's not a Skywalker, but that's the last name she chose. Because throughout the whole movie, it's like, what's your surname? I don't, And that's what it is. It's, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. And then she finds out, you're my granddaughter. And she doesn't want to be that. So she chose the Skywalker lineage, and she took that last name. And this is the cool part, if anything. This is the part I was like, okay, this is, it's, it ended right back where it started. She went back to that which, okay. So, from a movie standpoint, love they went full circle with it. Love mm-hmm. the fact that she retired on Tatooine. Love the fact that they shot it over over what 40, 45 years ago <laughs> on, on, on the same desert, the same the same place. It's fucking awesome. But again, it's that whole fucking like, bitch, you found out who your lineage is, and you're gonna just steal the Skywalker name. It 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 didn't really. It ended well. Like it ended basically like you know someone like what's your name, and she's like my name is Ray. <laughs> And then there's a, there's a Skywalker. pause. Skywalker. She ended up living on the same ranch that Luke grew up in. She took over that that moisture farmer ranch. Who the you're fuck are the name Skywalker, and you're gonna be the best Jedi of all time. Which Way I to fi- go, fine. Disney I can I can I can come I can come to grips with this bitch being the best Jedi of all times. I can come to grips with her going to Tatooine. I can even come to grips with her wanting to fucking move into the fucking Lucas family and steal everything about Skywalker family. But bitch, you have a responsibility to train new Jedi. I agree, but that was the whole idea. I think I think the whole idea was they're just done with the jet. Like that order's done. They're they're trying to end it. What did you think about this? The color of her lightsaber when she finally forged her own and buried uh, Luke and Leia's. By the way, she had she had buried Luke and Leia's at that place. Her lightsaber was yellow in the final scene when she was on, on Tatooine. Yeah, it was about the last. That was one of the last thing. The last scene she just got done forging her own lightsaber, which was yellow. Oh, that's right. That is right. Yeah, and if, if she turns it on, it's yellow. And again, and before before Disney fucking gang raped the lore, every lightsaber had, color had a, a very specific thing. Yeah. And see, here's the thing: blue, green. I don't remember what yellow was supposed to be. She is rocking yellow. And if I'm correct, and nerds out there can correct me, if yellow is a historian's lightsaber, it actually does make sense because she <coughs> had all the fucking greatest Jedi inside of her. Yeah, she's just cream pie and fucking knowledge out out of her fucking snatch. So I'm really okay with her being a yellow lightsaber. I've missed your fucking okay. pervy fucking analogies. Let's say that Ray becomes a hermit, stays on fucking Tatooine, and never bothers a single person ever again, gets married, has kids, yada, yada, yada. We've already established, even in Disney canon, that the Force users are born with it, and you, so there will be more Force users. So to not have a training facility, yeah, the Jedi Order might be gone, but in like 20 years, they're going to come around, and they might be called like the fucking, uh, I don't know, fucking magic users or they might be called the mages, disney princesses something something that, that that explains this ability that these 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 people have these extraordinary people well in this, in this in this in this last people. trilogy they barely knew what force users were because they were so rare right so you know the exactly. the, the fact that so eventually luke and leia's adventure was was literally like a fairy tale to a lot of them right so given another 30 40 years and I don't know, like I said, the point is that eventually that, that this will come about again. And even Yoda explains that, like, he went to Dagobah to hide because the planet has such high dark side energy. So it's not just the people, it's the whole universe. It surrounds us, it imbues us, it embinds us. Like, that's what the Force is. So you will have people who have these abilities, but now without the Jedi teachings, are just going to make their own shit up, and then they're going to call themselves the fucking, you know, the dick twizzlers. I don't fucking know. Twist his dick! <laughs> 
Give him the good old dick <laughs> Oh my god! All in all, what, how many? Like, we'll do nerd boners. What would you give a nerd? What would you give this a nerd boners? Like, well, you do the one to ten nerd boners. Okay, I will 10. give it a. I'll give it a four. I will give it a. You chubbed it up and took a picture, so you, you didn't look flat. Okay. I'll give it a six because honestly, that that scene between the father son was really. Let me show you the power of my dark side. <laughs> was it was it Kylo? He wanted to get inside, get inside. I hate to say it this way, get inside of, or was it his granddaughter? Because that just makes it so much worse. He wanted to get inside everybody. Like I he think wanted so. their hate to flow. Just let your he was, anger flow. And this Rudy. this is what's funny is that he was attached to this like slab that moved around. And it, what do you think of that scene where like the like you know like I said the all like we were saying like that that was ripped off completely from uh, the Avengers when all the good guys were actually winning and then all of a sudden he's shooting lightning in the air like it's like he could have did that in the past and won. Right. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They like, opeed him a little it, bit. It, it, they did OP him, but here's the thing, like, if he's working on his powers and he's saving his energy, then he could have, like, uh, I don't know if you ever played Star Wars Force Awakens when Starkiller pulled down the Star Destroyer. Oh, yeah, that's Star- one of my favorite scenes in that. I kind of look at it like that. Like, I feel like he, he used a lot of his energy to do it, and it's probably possible, but, like, I definitely think they OP'd the fuck out of him, because, like... Why would you need a fleet of ships and a Death Star if you could just like shoot lightning and destroy that's a and ship? that's where I'm like, coming from? Like, why did why did why did he just not show his power back then? Because he didn't do shit in the first three movies. He just sat there and let Vader yeah. do everything. That that that's my nerd bonus. Is like I'll give it a four. Yeah, like it's a, it's a six because it 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 felt like Star Wars, and now we know this atrocity is finally over. Well, let's talk about the Mandalorian real quick. Okay, oh, I've watched I all not of the episodes. Oh, you don't have time? I've watched, I've watched all the episodes. I want to know where they're getting all these fucking memes of Baby Yoda. I will be back for a Mandalorian podcast, but here's my uh, initial opinion. No. Fuck that show. But yes, I love that show. No, I don't, I, I don't like it because of Baby Yoda. Okay. I want that little fucker to be drowned in a fucking creek. It's not cute. He's not adorable. He doesn't like chicken nuggets. Stop making stupid fucking memes. He's not cute. He's not adorable. He does fucking nothing. He's he's not. You, you know what? No, you guys gonna get me into it? We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the next podcast. Yeah, we're gonna get yeah. into it. So I think we're done, guys. Is there anything else we want to talk about before we go? I mean, it, we I know we missed a lot on the show. If you guys nerds, if you guys think we might have missed something, put it down there or in the comments. Um, I like I'm I'm almost to the point where like I'm with the exception of maybe the Mandalorian and some of the shows. I'm done with with Star Wars movies. I'm in that same boat, and it's coming from somebody who's got Jedi and Sith tattooed on his knuckles. So it was good to come back. I'm happy to be back, you know, and talk about this last one because we've talked about every single movie with you guys. Well, that's the whole reason I asked you to come for this is because you've been on every single Star Wars podcast we have ever done. And it just doesn't feel right yeah. if you weren't here. So, no, and honestly, no, I have been dying under a rock. I've actually just picked up my MMA career, and I've, I've, uh, I'm actually going to be fighting in Nebraska uh, on the Nebraska? 21st. So, yeah, okay. I will be, I will, I will be, I'll be, I'll be punching and kicking people on the 21st. So I just picked up my K, I just picked up my K fighting career, and with that level of competition and it comes that level of training where basically all I have time for is work or train. Like literally if I'm not at work, I'm at the gym. It has been, it has been, it has been good to be back for this one. So thanks for having me back. Oh, it's always a pleasure, brother. Of course. So, all right guys. Well, with that said and done, we're going to go ahead and end the podcast. We thank you for watching. We thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. We want you to stay nerdy. Stay sexy always. Peace.